Hey everybody, it's Jim, and welcome back to another lesson of Introduction to Corn Shell. This right here is the man page for the date command. Now, you see the name, date. Here's some optional flags. You know, you know they're optional because they're in the square brackets, so dash n and dash u. There's also a dash r that takes a parameter of seconds. That's optional. And after all the flags, you can optionally have a string at the end. That's something we haven't looked at in Corn Shell. Once again, this is a Unix command. But what we're going to do today is we're going to lay the groundwork for having an optional string that can be read in to our Corn Shell command after all of our flags are read in and processed. So this right here is the program we're going to look at today. It takes in some optional flags and as you can see the dash x takes a value and at the end of all the optional flags you put your optional strings, your optional arguments. Now on the command line that looks something like this. This is just an example. What we're trying to do today is find out where these optional strings begin. Is there a way looking at our command line list, which is stored in dollar asterisk, to find out when we're done with the flags and when the strings begin? The answer is, of course, yes. Corn Shell has a reserved variable called OPTIND, and it's all in caps, and it holds the location in the list at which getOps is. It stops updating the index, this variable optEnd, when it finds something it can't handle. Now, before we run the getOps command, this is our string. And the index pointer is pointing to our first entry in our list. So getOps knows to go here. After we run the getOps, it points to the next one. And when we run getOps, it then points to the next one. Until getOps finds something that it can't handle. In this case, it can handle the dash Y. It can handle the dash Z. It could even handle a dash Q, which is an invalid flag, because we set our program up to handle invalid flags. What it can't handle is this letter A. It doesn't know what it is. So the index stops right here. No matter how many times we run the getOps after that, it's always going to be right here looking at this letter A. So let's take a look at the code, and then we'll run the program. So what we have is just a for loop. I created a for loop that runs four times, and it takes one, puts it into counter, two takes it, puts it into counter, so forth and so on. I just wanted a loop that we could run four times. Inside of the for loop, we print the present value of our reserved variable optEnd, that stands for option index. In other words, where am I in the dollar asterisk list, the input list? It prints out the input list just so we have something to compare to this. And then it just says I'm running the get ops. It runs get ops. It doesn't do anything really with the results other than it stores the value that it finds from re running get ops in the variable flag and then it prints what the value of flag is. Now remember if get ops finds an x, a y, or a z it will store that in flag. If it finds an invalid value, an invalid flag, excuse me, it will store a question mark in flag. So let's run this. So the first time it runs, right before we run get ops, the index is 1. It's pointing at the first in our list. We run get ops. It tells us that our flag is y, which it should be, and then it updates our index and points it to the second piece of information 
in our list, our input list. Runs get ops again, finds that our flag is Z, which it should. It then updates our index to be located at the third place, which is the letter A, which it should not be able to handle. It then runs get, get ops, looks at the letter A and says, what? And so it keeps the index pointing at letter A, even though we run ops again afterward. So as you can see, it was at three. We ran the get ops. It encountered something it couldn't handle, and it stayed at three. So we now have a way of knowing when our optional strings begin. And just to show you, you can run this command without any flags. And as you can see, it says the optional index, option index is one. It runs get ops, comes back with what? And it keeps the option index at one, no matter how many times we run get ops. And one last thing I wanted to show you is that our dash x flag requires a value. So what happens when we run this program? Well, the first time before we run get ops, the index is pointed at 1. It says this is our list. It says our flag is A, but it knows that the x flag, excuse me, it, it says our flag is x, but it knows that the x flag needs a value. So it grabs the A also. And then the next, after we're running get ops, it updates the index to point to right here. See, index is 3. So in this case, when a flag needs a value, the get ops updates the opt index by 2. It went from 1 to 3. So it took these two out in one swoop. However, after running, as you can see, the index did stay at 3. So once again, we now have a way of finding out where our, our optional arguments begin.